Welcome back to the Cognac, Tequila, and the Girl Show. It's time to hang out with Rob, Mike, and Dunia. Whatever you don't want to say, they will with no chaser. Take a shot and let's have a drink. Is hashtag squad goals still a thing? Because they are. Let's go. Welcome back to Cognac, Tequila, and the Girl. We see, we see how we're starting this off. Um, <laughs> we're back with episode 184, I think. We're at 184. Yeah, 184. Almost yeah. another milestone. 185 should be a milestone. What? What? What should be a milestone? 185. Oh, no. I'm, 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 it can be. Can I'm, I feel like when you hit the fives and the yeah. tens, it's like a milestone. I'm going to say 200. I'm trying 200. Right. Okay, fine. Fine. Well, screw my little milestone, everyone. <laughs> Anyways, um, we are bringing a classic back that we haven't done in a while. To your semi-sober ones, which is, if you've never listened to one, you should, because you probably get some really good, solid advice from us um, non-practicing doctors over here. <laughs> Don't take this to the lifestyle. Because none of us have licenses. But we basically read, um, help me. I'm I'm licensed. Okay. I'm not. (laughs) Um, (laughs) We read, uh, help me questions and we give our advice. Um, Tequila will name the people because they're anonymous. And we carry on that way. Yeah. Um, But before we get into it, you know, we have a couple of things we like to do. First, tequila, how was your week? Good. Okay. That's it? Yes. No elaboration? No. Can you define good? <laughs> if you have to define it, <laughs> sorry for you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I knew something like that was going to come. <laughs> I'm glad you had a good week. How was your week coming out? Well, it was uh, interesting. Um, got a... Uh, New product, as I said, um, it's called Cancer Drink, and we're rolling, rolling with it. I mean, it's doing really good. It's uh, basically my mom loves it. Yeah, her mom loved it, and apparently we the slow tasting. We even sold over three cases with only so many people in the store. What's the taste? Like where you taste customers? No. Oh. So and you sell three cases, three over three cases. Yeah. Wow, that's fucking awesome! Within five minutes of starting to taste, you know, what's, what's the name of it? Cancer drink. Go cancer drink. Wow. And so, long story which short, I mean, huh? With the tahini. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, long story short, basically, um, uh, I have a customer that like sold out of the many he's bought already and wants to like double his order already. Wow. Wow, good one. And that wasn't even the tasting one. So. Yeah, no, yeah. Good, good shit. Go, go Cantor. Shout out to mm-hmm. El Botanero. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So what does Cantor mean? Just like at the camp? Yeah, basically. Yeah. 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 But they make this, um, you know, the, the big pots over there. Yeah. Oh, where? Yeah. So in Mexico. Oh, Mexico. Yeah. It's a Hispanic drink. Yeah. Go, go, the Cantor. But in a, oh, they, they do it like in the resorts and stuff, you know, where they have this big decanter and they pour. You know, when you go out there, yeah. it's a turn up. Yeah. Right? That's where the cancer It's a turn up drink. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is a turn up drink. Because yeah. the first guy I sold it to, he bought two of them. He goes, ooh. <laughs> he said, this is, this is, <laughs> this is, you know, sneak scary. Up. Yeah. Sneak up on me. It's a tequila base. So, anyway, yeah, tequila. I'll, br- I'll bring one next episode and put it on our show. From Police to Mexico. Yeah, so. Anywho, but yeah, that was it. Uh, did that, and then, then uh, picked up Harper. Uh, always, usually, hopefully, at the end of the weekend. That was a joy. And then she goes, <laughs> oh, here's a funny story. Oh, so sorry. Yeah, so I went to pick, just, pick up Harper, and usually, it's just, it's just I was like, I don't have a pop pop. So I stopped at the store and I got a pop pop for her. And I was joking and joke with her and be like, "Oh, Uncle, forgot your pop pop." Sure enough, she goes, "She's looking around my car." 
And why does she look over here by the gear shift? So why you joke with me? Why you why are you trying to trick me? You got me a pop up. How's your week? It was good. <clears throat> um, yeah, I worked a lot. Um, the person that I was training is no longer there. So <laughs> back to double jobs again. Um, yeah, I had an interesting week though. It's fucking hot, number one. But I've had like a lot of like signs. I don't know if people have that. Like four times this week, like, like a sign of something. Where it just like you're like, hmm, that's crazy. What kind of sign? Like a road mark sign? Like I, I, like I, I got signs, but I've thought of something or I'm doing something, or it's like the hmm. confirmation sign. Yeah, 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 that kind of thing. Um, Sometimes I get those confirmation signs. Yeah, and, and I get the sign. It was also pay week. That was a sign too. I got paid. <laughs> was it a bigger check? <laughs> Well, yeah, because I work two oh. weekends. <laughs> <laughs> Message. <laughs> she should get paid for 19 jobs. Yeah. So she has done 19 jobs. So there's that. That was that. My opinion. My week. Anywho, we got a segment we need to get into. We're going to talk about something really quick. What worked? What the fuck with the girl? Okay, so my what the fuck this week is, um, I don't know who listens, but there's a rapper, I don't know exactly how to spell it, but her name is Sexy Red. Um, no, I don't spell Sexy Red. I know how to spell it regular, but yeah. she, I think she spells it differently, which would make like, sense. Okay, yeah, so which would make sense. Like, so, that's great. Two, oh, great. two X's and two D. Oh, oh, great. Well, 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 well Tequila is giving you the proper spelling, so now you can Google it. Sexy Red. Um, yeah. When you're not around your children. Um, <laughs> She uh, she's she's a rapper. It's not my my taste, uh, per se. Um, but go her. Um, but she came out with a lip gloss line. Two words. One. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. One. Day. Um. Yep. Don't care. Show is all about the two X's. Like don't, it. don't care. What I do care about is this is the lip gloss line that she came out with. Mind you, there are a lot of young kids listening to this. I don't know why. Like I said, Google it. Not around your kids. And I just want to give you the names of her lip glosses. You know, um, if you're a makeup person, um, every lipstick has a name or a blush has a name. Sometimes people try to be cheeky oh, or cute. Right, now. All right. So she North, has not by North Side Princess. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a lip. Okay, so she that's has. A, that's, she, a, that's a brand, North Side Princess. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah. Anywho. Um, if these things entertain you, by all means, go ahead and buy it. Um, first one is called Coochie Juice. That's the first one. What you're not going to do is interrupt my segment with applause, because this is a lot of fun. The other one is called Booty Hole Brown. Are you dead serious? I'm reading it from the back of her package right now. The other one's called Nut. Nut? Yeah, just yes. Nut. That's kind of gross what's on that for us. Oh, oh, is it? Okay. <laughs> okay. Coochie juice was okay. No, coochie juice. All right. Um, yeah. The other one is called Pussy Hole Pink. Um, I'm actually going to go backwards on this one. So I'm right. the, the fifth one is called Sex on My Period. Oh. Yummy. Yeah. Um, the next one is called Blue Balls. If you want to hear it, hit a <laughs> cheer on Blue Balls. No. Mm -hmm. And the last two. These are the ones that really floored me, if, if that's even possible. Gonorrhea. Gonorrhea? Gonorrhea. Is are you one? dead yes, serious? Yes, yeah, yeah. I, what color is that? I don't know. Oh. I, and I'll never know. Um, and the last one is called Yellow Discharge. <laughs> Those are the names. This is, of her, this is um, getting out of hand, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. Um, she did on her own page say they were fruit fruit scented, but I don't know. Coochie juice, I guess, could be fruit scented. Maybe a booty hole. Um, maybe a nut. 
maybe a pussy hole of pink. I don't know if sex on appearance, fruit scented, blue balls maybe. Gonorrhea and yellow discharge are definitely not fruit scents. Um, yeah. And that's gross. That's ridiculous. I don't want yellow discharge on my vagina or my mouth, so <laughs> my thing is, uh, what the fuck? <laughs> What the fuck with the girl? Yeah. Damn. Next segment. <laughs> Damn. I'm joking with cognac. Okay. Oh, well, well, well. Um, why do ducks have tails? So they don't show their butt quacks. Oh, butt quacks. <laughs> I like that. Oh, okay. Bringing it back to something more. Yeah. <laughs> Kanye's coming out with a lip gloss line called Butt Quacks. Butt Quacks. <laughs> coming to the store. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Okay. Butt Quacks. All right. Are we ready to help Blood people? Butt flavor. Are we ready to help people now? Yes. Okay. All right. First one. Just, I'd like to go and look at the Um, again, Tequila will give us names after we finish. Dear semi-sober ones, my husband has been retired from law enforcement for five years. I can't retire as I'm self-employed. Okay. I was always the one who had to take time off work to care for him with his back and hip injuries. His mom, his dad, and my mom for the past 15 years helped. But I also took care of his kids during weekend visits. He has spent his retirement in chronic pain. He stays in bed until 11 a.m. and has reconnected with his high school and college girlfriends. All of them cheated on him or stole from him and broke his heart. One was a convicted felon larceny, convicted of felony larceny for stealing from a charity fundraiser. He promised initially that he would give these women up, but for the last three years he has lied to me about being in contact with them. He says he shouldn't have to give them up because they were, she put it in quotes, they were an important part of his life. Honestly, they gave him STDs and abandoned him while I have stupidly been loyal and faithful. I know he probably suffers from PTSD and has anger issues because he is mean to me. <clears throat> but I so look forward to having a real marriage once the stress of his job is over. He intermittently packs his belongings and leaves, but he returns after a few hours. He confides in these women, and they speak badly about me because of his lies. I don't want their energy in my marriage. What can I do? Not mine. I had to read that with but a... sweat lipstick. I don't know. What well, he likes it. Her name yeah. is Terry. His name is Chuck. Terry and Chuck? Yeah. Man, he don't like you. I mean, <laughs> that's like, I mean, that's a I done a no case for me. Yeah, honestly, officer. Honestly, ma'am, yeah, you, you like, can you can try some therapy, but it's time to move on. That's because I don't know how he's in bed in chronic pain, but he has no problem going go just disappear on your ass. He had to be happily to the other women to go find him now. He suffers from PTSD and has anger issues, but she's still been married to him. For 15 years. He ain't mean to them other women. <laughs> no. And they did, they did bad shit to him. Yeah. He not mean According to him. to him. Yeah. You know, because she's saying he's lying to these women about her, but how you know he didn't lie to you about them? Right. <laughs> I mean, seems like a pattern. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean. It's giving, giving Derek Chauvin. I feel bad. I mean, I feel bad for her at that time. For her to do that. Like, I mean, I don't, ma'am. <laughs> like, how how would you even write that to ask somebody? Number one, she threw me off when she said she can't retire because she's self-employed. And that's the point of self-employment. That's so you can retire, retire. Yeah. whatever the fuck you want. If you did it right. I mean. The only th the only thing I can think of is uh, that she has nowhere else to go, literally nowhere else to go, except for Olympic. Well, he does. She taking care of him. 
Is she? But that's, well, she <laughs> she might be taking care of him because he has the man. I ain't even well, what I'm entertaining saying. her. I ain't got shit to say, bro. I know. Yeah. I mean, okay. Well, then we can open and shut this case. <laughs> I'm just saying, Not the open and shut case. I'm saying that. Bitch, move. The, uh, the only thing I can think of is that he's, he is financially stable and maybe his pension or whatever. That, but yeah, even so. Pension and no penis. Oh. Yay. Oh, it's boring. Yeah. I'm on. Do you have any no advice for her at all? None for Chuck? Keep doing your thing. <laughs> be, be winning. <laughs> Shit. Not Shit. Chuck is winning. Chuck is winning. Shit. <laughs> Shit, even Joe on Family Guy in a wheelchair, the cop guy got his wife pregnant about five times. Okay, well, thank you for that point of reference. Right. This is why I'm not a old buster licensed. <laughs> 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 All right, next one. Dear semi sober ones, my sister and I have been estranged for eight years. She had an quote unquote unusual relationship with my ex husband. Meaning, they moved in together three days after I left him. My entire family insists there's nothing between them. She blames me, and even though I have reached out, she has never responded. She tells people all kinds of awful things about me and blames me for not knowing her girls. I just meet her children. How can I know them if I can't see them or meet them? I send gifts in the mail, but I'm somehow the quote-unquote monster. Help, please. Oh. So, Courtney, Kim, and Scott. Courtney wrote? Yeah. Okay. Oh, Courtney, Kim's and sister. S- yeah. And Scott. Yeah. Well, you start out first, because you don't want to give no advice last time. Besides, could go chop go. <laughs> yeah. Why? <laughs> Why what? <laughs> Why on what part? <laughs> I mean, you either get over it or you don't. I mean, don't sound like somebody over it. If it's about the nieces, you know what I'm saying? Just talk to your sister and put something together where you can meet the nieces. First of all, Courtney, Kim, and Scott have been fucking for a long, long time. Yeah. <laughs> like two days, three days, whatever it was. Three days. Three you left days. your husband, your sister, and what is that? Yeah. yeah. Come on now. <laughs> well, yeah, it was a quinky dink. Come on, it was a dinky dink. Yeah. They probably yeah. still fucking. Yeah. No, they, they well, live they together. Oh, they, they all live together now. That's, yeah, that's oh, what she oh, was saying. Oh, see, I ain't here. They could have write a name. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, all yeah. of a sudden, oh. They son. had an yeah. unusual relationship, yeah. meaning they moved in together yeah. three days after I left him. They sure took uh, uh, an uh, outback or something. Uh, like, okay. And so the kids are scouts. Well, uh, it just says her girls. So mm. that's, you know, Maybe, mm. probably. <laughs> that's well, my, probably uh, been scouts before he was she my, that was That's my point. Let's. Yeah. Yeah, so that's my 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 advice thing. Why you care? Yeah, why? Jeez. I if, don't know. if you wanna meet the girls, set it up. Well I, I, I mean, mean it gotta be some line of communication. Well yeah, I was gonna yeah. say because the fact of the matter is, you know, when children are involved it's really bad because, you know, if you have it's not any you, you know my my Solution to that, and I said this to somebody that I was talking to, but I didn't know their family dynamics. And my thing is, is if a child wants to, if a child is choosing not to be in your life, you know, that's not your child, it could be the parents telling them stuff. And you have to just suck it up and wait until they're old enough to make their own decisions if they want to meet you or not. But there's like nothing you can do. I mean, I don't know how old these children are, but, but. So what? Why? Yeah. What do you want to do? Go pick them up from your ex-husband and sister's house? Like, what, what is it you're trying to do? Nieces and nephews are a blessing. Absolutely. But uncles and aunts are not obligated to them. Yeah. So. so. And I don't, I wouldn't want to deal with any of that. Like, I would remove myself from all of that. Yeah. In general. Because 
Ew. If they in your life, it's a blessing. But and the family, the, the family doesn't agree with her. So maybe Courtney's a crackhead. You know, I'm sorry. Maybe. Maybe you're a crackhead and you caused all this and the sister was there for him the whole time. And the family's like, well, fuck, at least my grandkids are good or my niece is good or whatever. Yeah. And you're stable now and feeling some type of way. I don't know. But Kim and Scott have moved on. It sucks. You gotta move on to. Yeah. And don't bring the kids up as a reason, as a tethering. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It's like, I'm, I miss them, the kids. Yeah, you should never yeah. tether kids into your problems. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Completely. 100%. You should never do that. The kids don't miss you. Because <laughs> 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 if the kids miss you, that you'll be saying them. No, if you're. If the you're, mama be dropping their ass or whatever. No, if you're a decent person, the kids are going to miss you. And I, I did make that statement. That's not always true. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not always true. Oh, like I no, said, no, you don't know. There are sometimes the kids' parents are not decent people. No. But that you don't put hostility towards them. Is yeah, I saying. agree. Yeah. yeah. So. Sorry. All right, next one. Dear semi-sober ones, my husband and I have been together for nine years, married for seven. I moved into his house with him and I'm still not on the mortgage. I work full-time in the medical field and contribute to all the bills. We did meet with an attorney, and if God forbid something happens to him, we have a quick claim, quick, I'm sorry, I've never heard of this. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. I, I know you're not. Anywho. <laughs> it's so funny. God forbid something happens to him, we have a quick claim deed, and I wouldn't have to leave. However, he has said to me several times, if you do this or that, you can't live here anymore. I'm on eggshells a lot. My concern is that he could tell me to leave at any time and I wouldn't have a say in it. I love him with all my heart, but he makes me feel like I'm disposable and it makes me sad and uneasy. What do you think? We know you don't live in Texas. <laughs> well, I was going to say. But, um... <laughs> There's a book. It's called Bed Bug 101. You should pick it up. Then you never have to leave. What's their names? Oh, yeah. Sally and Joe. You know, I remember I remember when me and uh, Kanyak first hung out and I had a girlfriend. She had her place and I had my place. And he was like, God damn, what you got, a booty call? And nah, this 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 is exactly why. You need your shit, and I got my shit, and if we gonna um, cohabitate, we need to sit down at the table and, and, and put our funds together and get something that's gonna be ours. Until we can do that, and I got my shit, you got your shit. Don't, if you move in, you moving into my shit. All right. Not in Texas. No, 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 Texas, gonna... Texas, you stay in your own place. So, yeah. what's their name? Since you want to give them names, Sally and Joe. Sally and Joe. Sally and Joe. So, yeah. Sally and Joe here. Um, I mean, it makes sense in a way sometimes because <laughs> the biggest, um, uh, statistically, the biggest divorce um, happens with finances and stuff like that. You know, um, when somebody spends more on bullshit than they need to and vice versa. That has nothing to do with what she said. No, I'm saying, but for, um, she can basically, depending on what state, it doesn't matter. If they're living together, they're married. She said she met with an attorney and they came up with a quick claim, if you listen, where Sorry. if something happens to him, she doesn't have oh, to she move. Did. But he keeps telling oh, okay. her, right, but if I'm not dead and you do this, you do have to move. Okay. Yeah, because wherever they at, he owns the house. It don't matter yeah. about them being married. Yeah. Yeah. That's his property. Same with sound like if they had to go see a lawyer. Yeah, or not, okay. Yeah. That I get. Okay. So it is technically his property. He probably, I don't know what family he has. It could be generational property. So, okay, I mean, so Sally, or it could just be his house. Yeah, so um, Sally, I don't know where you live. Maybe you live in, like, London or some shit where it's hard to get properties or it something. Is. Um, 
But if you're in a state that you're able, I mean, you had to mention that you're in the medical field. Go get your own shit. Don't get your own shit. Don't help them with no more yeah. fucking bills. Yeah. And then go get your own shit, and then we'll just cohabitate when we want to cohabitate. Yeah. And then if not, then we need to cohabitate together and let's buy something together. Buy something Sell your together. shit. There you yeah. go. Sell your shit. Rent your shit. And there we'll get something go. together. And then we can talk about that then. Yeah. That's the simple fix. Yeah. Don't get, if you, especially if you walk around on a couple of Yeah, yeah. because you, you're not going to yeah. tell me you didn't cook me dinner tonight. That I could kick you out. Like, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? So, <laughs> That's how she's making it seem. Yeah. He keeps right. re- reiterating this is my shit. Yeah. Like, don't do that. Empower yourself, yeah. Sally. Yeah. And go buy your, go, even if you just written a one bedroom apartment. I was just about to say that. Go get a fucking apartment. Yeah. Whatever yeah. bills you said you contribute to the bills equally, if he keeps threatening you, yeah. then okay, then you handle it like you did before we were married yeah. since it's your house. And I'm, I'm going to be over here. And if you want me to come over, don't ask me to pay for shit because I got to mm-hmm. pay for my shit. Exactly. Yeah. They did that. Yeah. Here we, here we consider that whole situation. Because <laughs> you, you, just, you just took some power away from him. Yeah. You know, he, he basking in that power that he can hang that shit over your head. Yeah. Take that shit from him and go get your own spot. Yeah. Shit, after nine years, and you, you still dealing, you dealing with that shit? The fuck? <laughs> nine years? I, I mean, yeah, that's a long time, man. So, you should get off the plate. Yeah. Look at that book that I mentioned before. Should get off the plate. No, we don't have Should get off the pot? Yeah. Well, oh, 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 or or you're not a career girlfriend. Yeah, I've heard those things yeah. a million and one times. Yeah. Anyways, dear semi sober ones, my mom is a widow and has been dating a man. One day after they went out, I noticed he had left his phone behind. I know it sounds horrible, but I snooped and found that he's been texting another woman. He calls her gorgeous, offers to bring her food, tells her sweet dreams, sends her photos of himself, etc. I always knew my mom could do better and I had my suspicions about this guy and I'm very protective of her. She's been through so much. What do I do with this information? If I tell her, I feel ashamed for looking in the first place. Please help. Kelly is the daughter. The mom's name is Mary Bill. Not Mary Bill. And the man is Charlie. Charlie? Yeah, Mr. Um, Mr. Charlie. Not Mr. Charlie. You always put respect on the name of the pimps. <laughs> Tell you the truth. Lord. You know. Char- Charlie and Miss- Mr. Charlie and Mr. Chuck just <laughs> living life. <laughs> Sometimes um, you can't do that. You can't do that. Because the fact of the matter is when, when two parents um, have their own thing going on, that's... It's their, not parents. She's Her mother's a widow. A the, widow. Dad, the dad died, and the daughter doesn't particularly care for the boyfriend that her mother the got. The boyfriend, whatever. And Mr. She, Charlie. Okay, Mr. Mr. I'm Charlie. Not called, you know, Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie don't blame, don't blame Charles. Mr. Charlie. Mr. Charlie okay. is just okay. the man. Okay. Okay. okay, well, you got... Boyfriend. We're helping. Boyfriend. It's yeah. not... No, I know. Um, so it's kind of hard as a child to intervene with, like, adult Well, she's an adult. Stuff. I mean, but you know what I mean. Like, it's yeah. just, yeah. it's very difficult. Here's my thing. I'm not putting are, are respect on this ways. man's name, yeah. but you don't know what Maribel and Charlie got going on. No. Maribel might, did you look at Maribel's phone to see if she was saying goodnight, sweetheart, to somebody else? Yeah, we don't know they're, if they have an open relationship. Well, she's a widow. She's just, right. you should be happy she's actually trying to get back out there, maybe. And and, and, and what did she, she say that he was telling her that he called him the baby and shit like that? You know, calling her gorgeous, mm-hmm. offering to bring her food, telling her sweet dreams, and sending photos of himself. Yeah, I bet he do the same thing. To, uh, That's probably right, Doc Maribel. He do the same thing to Kelly. He called Kelly. I don't, I don't think. I don't think he he's, don't send no pictures. I don't right, think but, anybody's uh, doing that to Kelly. That's why she's <laughs> snooping up in her mama's business. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly, that, Kelly just, needs a man. That's just how Mister Charlie talked to the ladies. Mm-hmm. Hey, gorgeous. Kelly needs to. <laughs> Kelly <laughs> needs to. <laughs> Kelly needs to talk to Mister Chuck from the first one <laughs> because 
all the time in the world. Mr. Tony, Mr. Tony talks talk to, to all the ladies like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They talk. That's how he got married, baby. <laughs> hey, gorgeous. Can I bring you lunch? <laughs> Can bring you it's like it's all. Right. Can I bring you some nuggets? <laughs> friendly, <laughs> friendly, friendly band, bro. It ain't no harm in, in gorgeous. Shit. <laughs> Shit. Ain't no harm in gorgeous. Was he butt booty ass naked in the picture? Oh. Well, she ain't say he was butt booty ass naked. Yeah, in the pictures. Yeah, he just sent him pictures. Yeah. And what's Charlie's story? Maybe yeah. he's a widower too. Maybe. He's just throwing himself out there. All right. Kelly, you need to go find a home. That's what I think. Like, I'm super, like, if God forbid something happened to my dad, my mom's not going to do shit. She's already said that. But if she did, like, that's not my business. Yeah. If he's trash, he's trash. I don't have to look through his phone to know he's trash. <laughs> well, you're an investigator, so. Your mom is a widow. I mean, she, she's been through enough. So just let her have fun, her fun, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it probably ain't nothing that Charlie can do to your mom that she probably ain't even already been through in life. So, mind your fucking business. Your mom got on the new lip glosses. Yeah. She's going out on the <laughs> town and shit. Like, mind, mind your business. She got yeah. asshole lip gloss. <laughs> Whatever the fuck. Booty hole brown is working for it. Booty hole brown. <laughs> Yellow piss. Whatever the fuck. What I don't know. <laughs> I'm All coming right. up with new ones for her. So, TM. She don't need your help. TM. All right. Next one. Dear semi-sober ones, my husband of 25 years and I have become political opposites over the past several years. We watch different news networks and media. It has grown increasingly difficult to have any conversation with him without politics entering the conversation. As a result, I avoid talking to him about anything and it's straining our marriage. I also prefer to go to social events alone because he brings his political views into even the most casual conversations with people we are meeting for the first time or have known for a long time. Have you any advice on how to address this problem? I don't see it getting any better after the elections, regardless of the outcome. Deborah and Roy. Deborah and Roy? Yeah. <laughs> next, next thing, um, what um, I'm thinking about the church. That shit, that shit, the, the, the politics in church. You know what I'm saying? You keep that shit out, so out of life. certain certain things. Yeah, uh, Deborah. D- I don't. I don't know. Um. I ain't gonna say the church. I don't, I don't even know if I have advice. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Here's the thing. Like I, I myself um, have always said that I don't want to talk politics and religion with anybody um, unless I feel comfortable to, and that's usually just not because I just don't need to. Um, but I have seen in the past probably ten years that this has been like a contention thing between a lot of people, not just relationships, friendships, and everything else. Um, Like I say, I have no problem with differentiating um, between political views, but morals, and especially, like I said, racism, like type shit, like that's not a conversation for me. So it just depends how far gone it is. I don't think therapy is going to help because nobody changes their fucking mind on these two topics unless they choose to change their mind on those two topics. Yeah, especially if those two topics um, they feel like um, they had some life changing events based around those two topics. Like whatever politics they follow, they feel like those politics impacted and changed their life in a major way or. The church impacted their life and changed it in some type of way. They ain't on. They stuck on that because they have an experience with it. Yeah. But um, I'm, all I'm gonna say is, and it's kind of religious. It's churchy. I, I don't believe in religion, but uh, some people may take this as a religious comment. But uh, I'm not a religious person, but I believe in God and. 
the God I believe in, the first institution that was created was marriage. And anything created by God is under attack by Satan, the enemy, or whatever you want to call it. So any creation created by God is under attack, always under attack. So the first institution was marriage. So as soon as you say, I do, you under attack. And it takes that you, you two come together as one to fight against that attack. And if you open the door and you let shit like politics, religion, and all that, whatever else get in and try to separate y'all, you ain't gonna last because a house divided ain't gonna stand. And it's just an attack to tear that union up. And you gotta do whatever you gotta do to protect that union. Uh, but if it's too far gone, it's too far gone. You gotta get the balls and step away from it. But as soon as you say I do, you gotta know that that union is under attack. And the both of y'all gotta come together and fight all the, all the attacks, all the wiles of the devil. And if, if y'all not doing that and something stepped in, and I mean. Well, they've been married for tough. 25 years. And yeah. that's what's crazy to me. That's what stands out is in 25 years. The attacks don't stop. All of a sudden, this is like, okay, I don't, I can't deal with this. Like, now I don't even want to be around you. And that's that's crazy and sad and scary. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't see why that should affect anyone that's spent that amount of time together. And that's sad. So. Because it is, uh, in my opinion, it's not about them. It's about that union. And that a union gonna be under attack. Everybody that's married until they either not married anymore, or they dead and gone. It's just the whole unity, uh, holy matrimony, is under gonna be under attack because it was the first institution created by God. So it ain't even about the two people. It's about this union that was created by God, and you y'all got the balls to step into this union. I'm finna fuck y'all shit up. I have That's a feeling constant. that Roy thinks that whatever he says is coming from God. <laughs> 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 so I, I, just, I, I, I don't know. What's your advice? So, um, um, my my point was, it's you didn't make a point. You didn't say anything. So no, <laughs> what I'm saying now, my bad. Sorry, I tried to start like that. Yeah. Um. But you ain't even said that to me. Yeah, Kanye has entered the chat. You never said anything. You never said anything. You got quiet. Yeah. I apologize again. <laughs> so, um, no, I'm, uh, the, the thing is, it, you know, it's become more mainstream than it used to be. Where, you know, people fight about it more because it's just dug in. More Not for mainstream. Me. Not for me. Well, I mean, but you have your views. But yeah, yeah, but like, I've always had my views. You know, it's, I don't have to talk about no, my I views but, but in what every I mean, conversation. But what I mean by that is that it's just more, it's like more, they, they throw in your face. That's all I'm going to say about that. They just throw certain things. Okay, but to, her, to, but to her, Roy, Roy is throwing it in her face. Well, She's like, I don't want to do that. Okay. Roy won't stop throwing it in her face. Well, he, then he should shut the fuck up, I guess. I know. I'm done with it, too. So. You're done with what? Just talking. As far as, like, that, whatever. Did a, did a dog get hit? Let me this take... Is, let me, this is no, like, let me, Deborah and Roy... And no, no, here. I was running away because I had something... What does it say? Did a dog get collars or something? Yeah. Hey, dog, uh, <laughs> no, what, what I'm saying by that is... Like, if you try to point certain things out to people, like, it's a lot of things that you're like, yo, that doesn't make sense. Coming from old school, they, they're they like, why, 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 you know, all that shit. So, at the end of the day, you figure it out. How you want to think about certain things, that's fine. But it has become... Political has become a, more mainstream than it, it shouldn't be in their twenty-five year relationship. Though. Uh, it has. Okay. Well, Deborah, um, I'll <laughs> see you at your divorce party in November. Yeah, Deborah, right, right, probably don't feel the same. Deborah, way. what's what's the That's theme true. for November? Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'll get my outfit together. I'm We're giving saying. them advice, so I don't know what yeah, I'm talking about. I, I said, I told him. 
Just leave it alone. He ain't say shit. Yeah. It's, it's Deborah. Okay. We don't know Roy ain't say shit. Yeah, Deborah's asking what she's supposed to do. She, <laughs> okay. she already, she already give, asked him to stop. You start. can't give Roy advice right, because you can't <laughs> Deborah's been asked, asking what he's doing. <laughs> oh, I, I, I just try to I avoid told, it. I just I try to Roy duck and shut the fuck up. up. Well, I'm, sure De- I'm, I'm sure Deborah's told De- Roy to shut the fuck up. Deborah asking for advice. The, all right, Deborah. Yeah. I'll see you in November at your divorce party. Yeah. Let me know what the color theme is. No. But I'm going to pray for you. I mean, I don't know what advice to give Deborah. I mean, I like I said, either she, it stops or it doesn't. Okay, but there some, you go. Some, some stuff, like, is just, number one, politics and religion talk, like, he said religion like he talk, said. is yeah. annoying in general. It's just a back and forth. It's like, what? that's why I never it wanted is, to do it because, because I don't care. You're not going to change my mind. You're going to change my mind. Exactly. Whatever. That's what I was getting at. Right. But that's she's dealing with someone. That, but she's dealing with someone that won't shut the fuck about, okay. up about it. It doesn't matter what, what they what they do. They try to, he, Roy is weeding it into a conversation. They could be talking about fucking guacamole and she's going to talk. He, Roy's going to say, well, yeah, because illegal immigrants. Like, that's what she's dealing with. That's what I'm taking it. To so the point where she used to always want to be around him, and she doesn't want to. Because she just doesn't want to hear that shit. And I just so, I agree with so, that. So, Deborah, I mean, if you don't think it's therapy fixing, try that first. You know, I'm team therapy. But if, if, if Roy thinks that's a waste of money, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, Taking the seeds of See you in November, over. girl, because this girl actually <laughs> came from Houston. <laughs> another one, another dead, one. Dead ass serious. Another <laughs> Ask Gangsta, because I sent, I sent this question to her before we even recorded. Yeah. But like I said, you know, uh, giving my credit on that shit to Kid Lazari, um, giving my credit on that, he's right about that shit. Because you constantly, it's a constant. You can turn the radio on. I can listen to all this stuff. Oh. No, I'm not talking about like in general. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You watch TV, they're going to put something in there to, you know, influence you. That's it. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh-huh. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not I'm not calling out any <laughs> network. I'm not calling out anybody. But they put shit oh in God, there. Do you want Roy's number? I'll be telling you. <laughs> I'm just that's, saying that's, not, that's, that's obvious. That's right. It's obvious. But that's not what I said. Yeah, that yeah. has nothing to do with shit from Shiola. That's not well, what he said at all. Said, Let's when repeat. you got married and the first thing in the, the, yeah. had, the union is under attack. Yeah. Whether it's politics, yeah, no matter what it is. Be listening yeah. to the, the commercials. Or, can, I'm not influenced. It can, be your, start it can be your car. Uh, you show so much attention. Well, okay. Where do you think I am? It can be the car. It can be the Dear house. Roy? I know. Be, and my name is not Deborah. <laughs> so, it can be the same I am. It's no, I don't. Fair. No, I don't. You so are me you are me. talking like you're Roy. I'm giving Deborah advice. I just told Roy to shut the fuck up. But you have it. <laughs> you're def- I'm not supposed to shut the fuck up. You're, def- on the you're, def- you're defending it like you're Roy. Too. No, no. Okay, rewatch it. We'll rewatch it. I don't. I don't know what else to say. Um, I said, I, I need to talk because we're on a podcast. I'm talking. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just rewatch it. Okay. Because like, like, you're literally, you're acting like you're standing at your, you're at Roy's trial right now. And you're a defense attorney. <laughs> All right. I'm a lawyer. Anyhow, anything else you want to add to me on? No. Before I get to the next one? No. I just want Rob to know that what I said is the union is under attack. And it can be politics. It can be anything. It can be the pool, you know, that motherfucker can come between y'all. Um, it could be anything. Um, the devil wanna bust it up. Mm-hmm. And it take the union to stand together and be able to say fuck that pool or fuck the Democrats, fuck the Republicans, you know, whatever we gotta work on our shit and, and maintain our unity and, and our sanity in our home. You know what I'm saying? So we can be successful in, in what we went in front of the altar about. You know what I'm saying? But um, most people lose these days. Most people lose.
most people are not willing to, to stand with a loved one. The one they got married to, they get so engrossed in whatever they mind and thinking is and just let it fall. Well, I agree. All right, last one. Dears to my sober ones, I've been dating a wonderful woman for almost a year now and have recently noticed some odd behaviors. The one that concerns me the most is the way she's been dressing. Run. Case in point, we are invited to a pool party and a barbecue at a friend's house. When I picked her up, she was dressed as if she was going to a high-powered business meeting complete with heels and a Gucci purse. The second time, we were going to a memorial service for one of her co-workers' husbands, and she was dressed in shorts and a t-shirt. The third time, she dressed in sweatpants and a t-shirt for dinner, at, <clears throat> dinner out with friends at an upscale restaurant for their 35th anniversary. We've both gotten some interesting looks about her appearance. I've tried talking to her several times about her dressing inappropriately for certain outings and hit a stone wall. I've also, re <clears throat> sorry, I've also reached out to her close friends and that was no help. It's gotten to the point I'm considering not going out on the weekends with her. How can I deal with this? It's be beginning to affect me at work. Why is it affecting you at work? Jack and, Jack and Meg, and how long have they been together? I, just a year they've been dating. Nine months long. And her inappropriate is like real roundy, slack, slack, if she don't give a shit. Yeah. But she dressed up in a pink suit or something on the pool party thing. Well, it seems like for a year, like he said, she, okay, so here's what I think happened, Jack. Here's what I think. He brought up the first time when he invited her to a barbecue and party at the friend's house, she overdressed. You said something to her, Jack, yeah, <laughs> about yeah. her being too, why are you in heels and shit, and now she's being petty. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I think. Because there's no way you go to anybody's memorial service in a t-shirt and shorts unless you just came and found out about it. You don't go to a high-end restaurant in sweatpants and a t-shirt. They might not let you in that much. Yeah. I think, I think she was like, okay, so you don't like my updo? Let me show you what I can do. Damn do. That's what I think. I think Jack, you fucked up. And until you apologize... <laughs> <laughs> and accept her and her heels and Gucci purses, she's going to keep doing it. And it's only been a year. Just don't date her anymore. And she used to be in heels and Gucci? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's why I ain't no fucking relationship. Because <laughs> it ain't going to last. Because I ain't going to entertain it. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. Yeah, it's done. What the fuck? <laughs> But why would she show up to the pool party like? <laughs> but again, it's been a it's been a year. And have so seltzer drink. It's a pool party, so maybe he showed her this fancy house, and she was like, "Oh, you know, like yeah. I, I've known a many a girl, you know, I'm a, her suit yeah, I'm, I'm a I'm a I'm a swimmer. Yeah, I'm a swimmer, so I you know I try to be cute, but I'm also trying to get in the water. But a lot of people don't swim; they go to pool parties to look cute. That's probably yeah. what she did, and you were like, you're doing too much, and now she's like, watch me right, do too watch little. Watch me do too little. Yeah, that's, I, I that's what I think has happened. I agree. Yeah, I, I agree. agree. Situation. Yeah, because it can't be a consistent thing, as consistent as he's trying to make yeah. it seem. Yeah. Because they still, you know. Yeah. She's probably still wearing those heels and designer purses. Out to her albums. Yeah, to yeah. when she wants to. Just yeah. not around you. He just mentioned his albums. Yeah. yeah. What about when you go out with her? How she dress? Mm -hmm. To her advice. Yeah. Yeah, it's giving you fucked up and said the wrong thing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You you gonna fucked up and find out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 You fucked up and find out. You found the. And, and you don't know how to get the fuck out that situation. Yeah, just it's only been a year. Just no, move on. It's cute because she. Move she's on. Like, right, all right. Find someone that's. All right. Not into fashion that bothered you so much, or find someone that's casual. All right, all right. If you want to change that, I'm telling you, spin, dip into your bag, and and look, we I got invited to this. Look, 
I bought you this outfit to wear to this. You know what I'm saying? You always look nice and whatever. Yeah, but if he if he pissed Megan off, you know, Megan's I mean, gonna be like, "No, nah, I already got something." Whatever, then, then, <laughs> then you know. Let me, let me get this then, uh, then, tank then, top. Yeah, then, <laughs> and then you know. And then, there you go. I bought her this. Yeah. And she still jumped out like this. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. It's over. It's done. Yeah. But Not Megan, nine months. But Megan, that is funny. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that's pretty fucking yeah. funny. I mean, I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. <laughs> that's just, just, I couldn't do yeah. it. I'm petty as fuck. I was but so I'm not, I'm not like going to a high end restaurant looking boo boo. No. Yeah. You wouldn't do that shit. They're not, they not married. She, she yeah. married herself. Yeah. She could be passing up. She could be fucking it up with her real Mr. Right. Well, she's wearing her, her heels and Gucci purse with her real, with her yeah. real man. Yeah. <laughs> when he's available. He yeah. gets the t-shirts. I don't know. I feel like he fucked that up. That's, yeah, he fucked that up. That's his fault. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Move on, Jack. And that and that's what you get for looking for a trophy, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You you want her to compliment you and it's only nine months. You know what I'm saying? Why are you even taking her to all this fucking shit? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I, I wouldn't even take her to that shit. In nine months? I have a funny story. Yeah. If we have fun. Um, there was a make gen- it, make it a short, short a gentleman that told me that, that he went to a fine dining establishment with his lady, yeah. his wife at the time. And his wife pulled up because he saw her car at this establishment and he was eating whatever he was eating. And he looked up and she just smashed the bottle across his face. Yeah. And took his car, not the car she pulled up in, took his car and smashed out. Was she wearing t shirt and sweatpants? Yes. Don't get she why was that wearing was. Adidas, a uh, whole Adidas. I know the story. He didn't yes. give you what she had on. I, she had I a whole the Adidas the sweat, <laughs> sweatsuit on. Oh, I thought he was with his mistress. Mm-hmm. One of them. No. Anywho, can we get into this? Yeah, I'm throwing it out. Yeah, he, keeps, his, yeah, he, he keeps yeah. adding these tidbit stories that I've got shit to do with Shiola. Roy. Okay. <laughs> Alright, let's get to our next segment, please. So now we get to this third segment of the evening where we tell you 3,000 things about us using this magnificent book titled 3,000 Questions About Me. Me being Tequila, me being Kanye, she being a girl. This evening is on the girls, so you're going to randomly open the book to read the question, and we're going to answer it. 1374, 1374. Are you neat or messy? I'm neat. I'm neat. I'm Mes- messy if need be, as, as if you mean petty. <laughs> no, I'm neat. Mean- I, I mean, um, I can't stay out of my seat, motherfucker. I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty neat. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I mean, I, I, I sometimes I try to leave the bed unmade and still come mm-hmm. come back up and make mm-hmm. the bed. It's it, just, it's, just yeah, bur- I, just I've burn, done that burn, so burn, many but times. The time you got to go make that bed, bro. I, I, I literally, <laughs> like last night when you guys were here, you know how I am about the kitchen. That was, it's hard for me when I know it's going to get clean. <laughs> To not like, clip. yeah, I just, yeah, I don't like, I don't like messy. Yeah. I don't like clutter. I don't like. I mean, I, I don't like messy. Period. Yeah. Whether it's clutter, I definitely don't like dirty and nasty. Yeah. If that's not messy, I don't like dirty and nasty. So yeah, like I need to be able to use the toilet and not be like. Ooh. I need to be able to eat at your home and not be like, mm-mm. Those things are important. Yeah. So, yeah. Yay for the meat squad. Yeah. <laughs> right. But I can be a messy bitch if we're talking about you doing something horrible. Well, there's the girl. Yeah. She's the girl. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for listening. We love you. Thank you. We'll be back next week. We appreciate it. Keep liking and subscribing and telling your friends. Mwah. Bye.
chili cheese. Lady, you ain't got no lawn. You are that's it for this week's episode of Cognac, Tequila, and the Girl. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on your favorite podcast app. As always, we'd love to hear your feedback. Follow us on all the social medias. Leave your comments and reviews. Until next week, keep safe and keep your squad close. Thanks for hanging out.